Today's episode of Desertwood Days with Kathy Blaze is sponsored by Cole, Obart's Entertainment. Providing amusement, celebration, and distraction since 2013. To find out more visit us on the web at www.coleobartsent.com. <laughs> Desert Days, and I am your host, Kathy Blaze. Today, we have a fabulous guest for you. He's a podcaster and he's an entrepreneur. Let's welcome Mr. Jordan Yates. Hello there. Hey, how you doing? Good, good, good. You a hugger? I'm yes, a hugger. Yes, I'm okay. a hugger. Okay, I'm a hugger too. I tell him that's my tagline, I'm a hugger. Uh, yeah, we got the pink coordinating too. Yes, yes, yes. I love that pink. I love a man in pink. Yeah, that's right. Like, you yeah. know, I, I, I said uh, it makes my waves stand out and my skin look good. So I definitely wanted to make sure I was uh, looking apart for this opportunity. I agree with opportunity, you. So I agree with you. you. <laughs> so, Jordan, such a pleasure to have you and such a pleasure to meet you also. Likewise. We have, you know, it is, I always say we have so much talent here in Arizona. And a lot of times we don't know who each other is because we're all spaced out here and doing our own thing. Yes, ma'am. So it's such a pleasure to have you. I appreciate it. I appreciate the opportunity. You know, um, my good friend was actually a guest here. So that kind of was like, mm. Who's that? Diamond. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah, She's I've known a her for, yeah, I've known her for quite a minute. She actually used to do the podcast with me. Oh, okay. So, yeah, we we go back and uh, it's good to see her wings finally, yes. you know, spreading and stuff. So. Yes, yes. Diamond, digital dime. Digital dime. <laughs> digital dime bags. Yes, yes ma'am. Yeah. So, you have a podcast. I do. I, I You know, and I want to get to that, but I want, I'd like to get to know a little bit about the talent first before okay. we jump into all that other good stuff. I'm all for it. Um, when you reached out to me, you shared some of your, your past with me, and I appreciate you being transparent and sharing that with me because, you know what, that's the only way we can move forward by being open and sharing our story and our journey because you may help someone else out. Yeah, that's the reason why I started getting it out there was because I know it's a big battle that people you know are fighting on a daily. So if right. there can be an example of somebody like doing it, Right. Why not? And being a young person, and you know, especially with everything that's going on in our world now, in the schools, and I mean, we there's a lot of mental health, there's a lot of um, drug use, there, there's a lot of everything, abuse. Yeah. In the household, there's a lot going on it's, right now. It's scary out there. Yes, you know, it is. To say the least, it's scary. I have two kids of my own, so like. I stay away from the news because, mm. you know, you mentioned me mental health. I yeah. have anxiety, right? Wow. So, like, uh, when I'm watching the news and I'm seeing X, Y, Z, you mm -hmm. know, I'm, I start thinking about the kids automatically. Right. And it's like, you know, when I when we were growing up, mm. we didn't really have that fear. You know, no, I talk about didn't. to my friends all the time how we were able to go outside and play until mm -hmm. the lights came on. Right. When that, that light pole came yeah. on at the end of the street, that means get your butt in the house. ASAP. <laughs> you know, so now it's like it's a fear of even letting your kids go outside and enjoy right. that moment because you hear about stories of kids getting snatched mm -hmm. up and XYZ. So um, it kind of sucks because now everybody's like, you know, kids are all on the video games and on the phones right. and electronics, but right. it's like, what else can they do? You know, right. like you can only have a kid inside for so long and doing crafts and X, Y, Z until they're like, okay, I'm bored with they're this. They're bored. Right? They're so bored. it is sad, you know, but at the same time, we make the best of it. So. Right. And you know what? That's one thing that I love that, um, with the entertainment industry, there's so much that our young people are getting involved in, whether it's being a creating their own podcast, yeah. whether it's becoming a little actress or whatever. I mean, we've had some guests here that from, I think from the age eight up. Wow. Yes. And they're doing things like that in the community and their peers get to see it. Yeah. So, you know, even though they may not want to do that themselves, but they're living through their friends. Yeah, and so, a lot of them don't understand. Like, it's an opportunity. You don't know who's out there watching, right? Uh -huh. So, like, talent scouts, agents, right. things like that. Like, they're always constantly looking for the next big star, quote-unquote, right? So, like, 
Um, some kids may not want to, but like, you know, don't be afraid to like really show your, your talent right. because if that's something you want to do or, right. you know, even if it's something small time for, for a couple years, right, right. you still get that experience right. under your belt. So, well, that's why it's so important for people like us, you know, people will say I'm not a role model, but you know, whether you want to think so or not there's some child looking at you somewhere. Of course. Yeah. Okay, because, you know, they may not have that role model in their household. Mm -hmm. So Jordan may be the person that they're looking at. I try see? to be. Yeah, I, I, try mean, to be. You, I mean, you can only be the best you you can be. I mean, yes, you can't change who you are for someone else, but you can only be the best you can be. I'm glad you said that because I really did try to change for someone else, and it didn't work out, mm -hmm. right? It, yeah, I was... I was pushing to be somebody that I thought this person wanted me to be. Mm -hmm. And when I started doing that, I started losing myself right. and becoming unpleasant. Right? right. So like be yourself, because that's the most important thing. You're going to find somebody or somebody's going to find you and they're mm -hmm. going to love you for who you are. Right. That's true. And if you got to change yourself for a certain person, maybe that person shouldn't be in your life right, because right. you are who you are now. If that person's like, yo, you uh, you got to put the bottle down or something mm -hmm. like that. That's right. That's a different story. Yeah, that's a different that's story. A different but story. like, you know, you are your own character and everybody right. falls into like, let me be like this person and let me be like that person. Or mm -hmm. if you want to be like this person and that person, who are you? Right. You know, you're right. losing your character. You're losing yourself. And, you know, that happens in the industry a lot, too, is that you have this person that's trying to say, well, you know what? I want Jordan to be like this or I want Jordan to be like. But you're changing who Jordan is. Yeah. Okay. You're not going to get Jordan's original content. Right. You're going to get content because people, like, don't get me wrong. I like to listen to what people want and uh -huh. take that as an idea. But if I switched everything I did up to meet certain expectations, yeah. I wouldn't be putting out content for me. Right. right. And that's the point of putting out the content. I started putting out content because it made me happy. Right. right? Doing the, the whole creative process. Right. That's something I like to do. I like to get real nitty gritty. Uh -huh. I'll, I'll watch film a million times uh -huh. to find the right clip. So... You know, just being able to do that, it allows me to go into this space where, like, I'm unbothered by anything. Right, and you, like you said, you have two children. Yeah. Okay, and they need to see the best of you. Of course. I mean, it doesn't matter what anyone else, you, you have those two little people that you're molding, and they need to see the best of you. Yes, ma'am. And the best of you is by you being you. Mm hmm Because you want them to grow up and be able to say, oh, I'm Susie, I'm... I'm yeah. little Jordan. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you want them to be their authentic selves. Of course. And that comes from them seeing who daddy is or mommy is. Mm -hmm. But we can't let the world change who we are because that's where the best content comes from. When we're being ourselves. Yeah, and then people are like, man, I don't want to watch this. You're just like, oh, dude, this right. already doing something big. Like, be be original. Right. And that's what I try. Like, there's nothing wrong with getting ideas from, no. you know, other shows. Because that's where, that's the creative part, right? Like, I come up from a culinary background. So okay. we were we were taught, we were given the recipe, right? Uh -huh. But you can take a recipe and manipulate uh -huh. it and fold it. So, like, uh -huh. you, got the, you got the fundamentals. Now add your own flavors, add right, your own seasoning, right. make it yours, find your target audience and target them, right? right? And now you that's got like something magical. Cake. Oh man, how many cheesecakes are out? I love cheesecake mm, too. <laughs> that's my specialty now. Oh really? I'm gonna make y'all a thank you cheesecake. You know my, you know my birthday is coming up soon. We'll talk, we'll talk. I got you. I got you. <laughs> but um, I I want to get back to what got you here. If you, you don't mind talking about that for Not a little at all. bit, Not at all. because you know what getting into um being able to take bring out your passion sometimes it takes something that push you to it of course because sometimes we get lost and there's something that pushes us back to our passion mm -hmm. and can we um tell a little bit about what brought you to whom you are today of course so um you know back in the early 20s uh i'm 30 now so early 20s um as every 20 year old, you know, I was doing my, my dabbling in alcohol. Right. So uh, it got out of control. Mm. Right. And with the alcohol came other drugs, cocaine, mm. things like that. Um, and that really took a hold of my life. Right. Mm. I was still working and things like that. Um, but I had to be at the bar. I had to be drinking. Mm. I had to be doing all the, the craziness that came with that. Um, so uh, eventually it came down to like I went, you know, me, me and my kids, mom, we were fighting and uh, you know, like every other 
spouse going through, you know, alcoholism, mm -hmm. you know, she was fed up. So she gave me an ultimatum. Um, so I went to rehab mm -hmm. and, you know, did the whole 30 days in rehab, uh, got out, started going to the AA programs, but I feel like I was missing something like life got, it got boring, right? Mm -hmm. I was a fast paced person at the bar mm -hmm. living this fast life. And right. now out of nowhere, it just slows down to like 50 miles an hour. Right. right? So, um, I started to get bored and just forgot about sobriety. I was like, forget this, oh. like this ain't life for me. Oh. So I jumped, I got back on the wagon after oh. getting sober, right? Oh. Ran that train for another nine months. And one day woke up in Sedona. Like, so when you wake up in Sedona and don't know how you got there, that's the problem, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not the fact that I was in Sedona, it was the fact that- In like, this beautiful place. <laughs> how did I get here? Right? Yeah. Um, so waking up in Sedona was, to me, it was like, okay, dude, uh, what's going on with you, mm -hmm. right? Like this, this ain't right. Like I've done some crazy things, but I always ended up back home mm -hmm. by the end of the night, woke up in my own bed. So waking up in Sedona, I already knew A, like, I had messed up with myself, but you know, my missus at the time, she was she was not happy. Right. So I got the phone call like, this is it, you know, I'm taking the kids, like you gotta, oh. we, gotta we gotta go, cause oh. I can't do this anymore. So that right there was the last time I ever took a drink. Like wow. I, I stopped cold turkey right there. Um, and I, st I kept going to the AA programs, but honestly, um, and this is nothing against the AA people, but like, I felt like I was being judged, right? Oh. You know, like I'm going into a place looking for an escape and here yeah. I feel like I'm being attacked. So oh. I stopped going to that too. Oh. Um, and that's how I got into podcasting because I needed, I felt myself needed, getting bored again. You needed that outlet. Yeah, yeah, I was like, okay, I feel another cycle coming. So I mm -hmm. need to break this real fast. So the podcast was really put together just to have fun, to be mm -hmm. honest with you. Before, I before getting into the alcohol and stuff, were you, I don't want to say that, and the adrenaline junkie? Oh, yeah. You, like, okay, so, like, I, I'm not, like, somebody who likes to go cliff diving, but okay. I am a very fast-paced, like, okay. I love, I like, I love to entertain, I love to okay. engage, you know, I, I'm, I'm love So moving. there was something that was missing that drew you to that. Yeah. Okay. So, so I want to move faster because I don't want to miss anything before, so you, you, you stopped and mm -hmm. got into so what was it took you to podcasting um really just needing that that outlet you know uh, um i knew that people needed to hear that someone out there is struggling with the same battle but we can we can get through it right mm -hmm. because uh what people don't know is like addiction is crazy like mm -hmm. you you can tell yourself like this is it but it really isn't like mm. all it takes is that one time right and now me i can go out to clubs mm. i can be around that and i don't even think about oh. it you know like, well you know an addiction is an addiction I, and i tell people whether it's food yeah i mean an addiction is an addiction yeah a lot of people really don't understand it is a mental illness yes, you know like so um so battling that dep uh, depression anxiety like all that was just really destroying me so mm -hmm. i was like i need a positive outlet you know so do you remember that first day you got on that podcast oh yeah it tell was me hectic about, tell me about that <laughs> it was hectic because i didn't know what i was doing you know I, I didn't know what i was doing but i felt great doing it you know i had friends around me um and really we were just having a conversation there was no agenda it mm -hmm. wasn't like this is what we're going to talk about today it was like turn the mics on and let's just, just start talk. talking um and eventually like as that kept going, we picked up on a, like a topic. We picked up on our niche, mm -hmm. and now I've won three awards for my podcast. You know, consecutively. So. Tell us the name of your podcast. Uh, the Hippie Chronicles. Congratulations! Yeah. It's on all that streaming platforms. So, awesome. so. tear. That yeah. is so. Yeah, that is I appreciate awesome. it. Um, and that's one thing. Like, you know, this last year has been real crazy for me. Probably mm -hmm. one of the most difficult years I've had since oh. being sober and I'm still sober. I'm still oh. doing my podcast. And that's because of the two little babies I got. Yes. You know, if they saw me give up and throw in the towel, how could I be an example? You right. know, teach them to keep pushing no matter what. So right. Right. I'm here now, you know, yes. getting these opportunities yes. and stuff. So I'm I'm very not only blessed but and grateful. Your girlfriend. Your your ex girlfriend. So yeah, she Because she went through all that with you. Yes ma'am. So for her to see you clean and doing what you're doing i'm sure that's a good that's good for her too it, it is she's she's definitely uh proud of me right yeah. we're not together now but like she still lets me know 
you know, how proud she is yes. because I, you know, I, li I don't live in a real bad neighborhood, but mm -hmm. I live in a neighborhood where there's a lot of homelessness, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, I drive by that spot every day and I'm like, that could have been me if I right. kept going down that path. So I'm very grateful that, you know, I was able to just find something to keep me busy and just have that willpower and determination to just be like, there's something that better than drugs and alcohol that right. you can find to really, mm -hmm. you know, get through it. But you know what? You, you, there are tons of Jordans out there that probably are still in that position that you were. They don't know how to get out of it. Yeah. But one day someone will say, hey, you need to listen to this podcast. I hope or so. Or you need to maybe meet this guy. I mean, you don't know how many people you may be helping with this. Yeah, I, hope, I really do hope so because... It, it saddens me to see that, you know, like just knowing like that's where I come from and that's what's still out there, you know, because those, those people are really lost, you know, yeah, and like right. it, it really just takes somebody like and not just somebody not court report, like appointed someone mm -hmm. to be like, OK, let's go. Like mm -hmm. somebody that really cares and is going to be like, look, man, I know what you're going through. Right. Like, let's do this. Let's do it together. You know, like the whole AA, the, the, the program was like you had to have a sponsor okay. and to me it was like a babysitter. I don't, you don't need a babysitter, right? Let me right. give you a little accountability, but like, let's do this because life right. is so, it's good. It's good out here. And I know this is an entertainment show and some may be saying, well, why, what, how is this entertainment? Well, you know what, this is entertainment because he, you know, he's entertaining people out there. He's being a blessing to people. He has a podcast that's out there that's helping people. So yeah. that's why he belongs on this entertainment show. Tell us about the awards you won. Okay, so my podcast, um, it is a cannabis-based podcast. Um, so in 2020, what is it, 2022? Mm -hmm. So 2020, I won Best Cannabis Podcast. That was 2020 and 21. Mm -hmm. And then this year, I won Male Entrepreneur of the Year. Okay. Um, so yeah, the podcast, I mean, I've met people like Allen Iverson, mm -hmm. Al Harrington, real big names, people that I looked up to as a child, right. you know, this has opened right. so many doors for me. So mm -hmm. um, I'm in the midst of creating a, a web series mm -hmm. that's going to get picked up by, I can't say too much, but right. like, um, that's just the hard work and determination. You know, when I walked into the studio, I was like a kid in a candy wow. store because I'm seeing the cameras and yeah. the lights. And so, you know, I, I'm really into just creativity, um, teaching. And just letting people know life's good. Can I ask you, um, you know, someone may say, well, you know, he just, he has his addiction. Why is he promoting cannabis? Can you give them that answer to that? Of course I can. So um, it's funny because if, okay. if you're, you know, I, 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 I'm chuckled and I asked you the same yes, thing. No, no, I've been <laughs> asked this question like a million times, right? And if I give people this answer, they're going to be upset, but I'm going to give it anyway, right? Mm -hmm. In the alcohol and addi in addiction period, right, the rule is you're not supposed to have any mind-altering substances. Mm -hmm. If you go to any rehab facilitation or any AA or any anonymous class, there's cigarettes and coffee. Mm -hmm. There's caffeine and nicotine. Mm -hmm. Both of those are mind-altering substances. Mm -hmm. So you're telling me that it's okay for me to sit here and get loaded up on caffeine because it's going to give me the same high that the other that I was chasing. Mm -hmm. And then I can smoke nicotine to level that all out. But mm -hmm. I can't smoke cannabis, which honestly has saved me from going back into mm -hmm. the dark side. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I do promote it because not only did it help me, but it's a and, medicine. And that's what I was going to say. And providers provide it. For um, medicinal, medicinal, that's medicinal the purposes, well, yeah. yes. Like so. they don't tell you that whole plant. You can cut the leaves off. You can juice the leaves and drink it, and it it helps your uh, regenerative cells. Mm -hmm. It helps your uh, red blood cells. Mm -hmm. It helps with digestion. It gives you fiber, and people don't know that. Mm -hmm. You know, like you can make creams out of it um, to help with skin cancer mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, autism, if, you, if you're if you somebody that suffers from um, uh, seizures, mm -hmm. you know, you, you cannabis helps. And that's, yeah. the, like, it's been so outlawed. It was outlawed for people, you know, of color and then the hippie movement. Mm. You know, that's why cannabis is labeled the way it is because it, but if mm. you look at it, if you break it down in a scientific manner, cannabis cannot hurt you unless yeah. you have a lot that, there's like a, an allergic reaction you get right. to where it makes you sick, like right. throw up. But other than that, there's no record of overdosing on cannabis. There's right. no record of 
anybody dying from it, you know? Mm -hmm. So if anything, when you talk to somebody who uses cannabis, you get a good story. You know, you get somebody that's like, you know, it helps me focus. It helps me sleep. It helps me eat. I have, I tore my Achilles a Mm -hmm. couple of years ago, you know? So that pain management, because of, uh, you know, I was on the sober train, I wouldn't take pain medication, Mm -hmm. but I would smoke, you know, I would put the cream on my leg because I would rather be addicted to cannabis than go down the, not, yeah. You know, pain, substance, pill, like that's how heroin addiction started. Mm. So I'm good on that part, you know. Right. So where can our audience find you? So our Instagram is The Hippie Chronicles. All of our podcasts are on all streaming platforms, Spotify, Apple um, and YouTube for sure. I definitely would, you know, recommend keeping your eye on that YouTube channel because this web series is going to be uh, very educational okay. um, and entertaining at the same time. Okay. You know, it's going to be very travel related, but also around you know okay. what we do in our, our industry. Wonderful! Yeah, congratulations! I again. appreciate you. Thank and you so much. Thank you for joining us today. It was such a pleasure to meet you. This was awesome. And learn all about what you do. I got, I, I want to bring you on my show. Well, well, you know, I would like to sit down and, and, you know, and peel back your show life. Choking, huh? Look, look, <laughs> hey, only, I, that's up to you. I don't force people to do anything no, I don't I want don't to. But <laughs> if you want, you know, we don't. I would like to sit down and you know get to know you too. This was fun. Sounds. We'll set yes, that ma'am. up. Well, thank you for joining us, and we'll be right back after this commercial break. And thank you for joining us here today on Desert Wood Days, and we'll catch you next time. Uh,